I'm hopeful we have Sam. He won't boot me. <laughs> so far, we're doing good. <laughs> so, uh, hi everybody. Today, uh, my name is Ron Perry, and uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, photographing your models. Uh, often, we try to photograph these real small models. Uh, this model of a tractor that I'm painting today. Um, we're trying to uh, photograph these models, and parts of the photo are out of focus. Uh, sometimes the lens that you're using is incapable of focusing at certain points in the in the picture. And there's a lot of things that you can do to make photographs as good as humanly possible for even magazines. Even if you use a cheap DSLR camera or a, a cell phone, uh, you know, sometimes there's always a way to make your photos look great. So today we've got Edward Traxler here, and Edward's going to talk to us about a program mainly called Helicon Focus, but there's other options out there that we'll touch on. So hi, Ed. How are you today? I'm doing great, Ron, as long as you don't boot me again. <laughs> <laughs> no more ejections. Okay, uh, so Helicon Focus. Yes. What do you think? I think it's an excellent program. Uh, for those that don't know what it is, it's called it's a focus stacking program. Yeah. And what that means is you're sampling a, uh, a several photos and stacking them together. To, uh, a, a lens has a focal point. Yeah. And it's sharpest at that place at the center of that focal point, and the focus then uh, falls off as you get away from that focal point, either further away or closer in. Mm -hmm. We get around that as model photographers and as you know, photographing outside by using a large uh, aperture, or actually a smaller aperture opening, which is a larger f-stop, and I can forget why that is. And, the, ap and the aperture is, is the circle that allows light onto the the sensor think uh, yes think of your pupils in your eyes yeah if you're outside in bright daylight it has a small aperture mm -hmm. or opening if you go inside where it's really dim your eyes dilate that's a large aperture or a large opening okay your eye, your eye is mostly as a camera yeah so when it's closed we get a better focus or no okay. no when it's closed you can't see <laughs> <laughs> don't ask me okay so uh yes so we've got examples of uh this because it's not really the easiest thing to explain uh yes. offhand so uh how about you show us your gondola and uh okay. i'll come back with my model after all right now okay let me go to gondola f36 okay uh my preview okay and well, I gotta go I gotta share screens so one second uh, oh god I got too many screens open here <laughs> okay, wait a second uh, oh there there you are okay share screen share screen is it no one, one second I got it's a green, it's a green button. No, I, I got that. I'm just trying to see where. I just had. Okay, uh, and share. Did, is it sharing? No. Screen share. Helicon focus share. Okay, yep. it should be. You're and, out. Okay, let me go to my F36 right there. Okay, this is a gondola. You're showing the folder. I am showing the photo. Well, okay. Bring that image to the front of the screen instead of uh, going full screen with it. Let me. Either that, or you can press screen share again and and select a different window. Yeah, I'm. I I just moved it over to the other window. Can you see it now? 
Yes. Okay. This was taken at an F. This is not using focus stacking. This is a normal uh, photo taken with a, a, a large F stop, F36. That means that the aperture is very small. Okay. This is what you would normally do if you were going to um, take a photo on your layout. Okay. And it's approximately focused right in the center here. And so this ends pretty much in focus and this ends pretty much in focus. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not the, the best way to do it, but if you're like, pretty much in focus, yeah, it's pretty much in focus. And this is what you would see, uh, uh, a lot of times in a forum because in order for this photo to appear uh, on a forum, you need to reduce it around 800 pixels in width because then you've been to a forums and all of a sudden there's there's this huge picture and you've got to scroll like crazy to see it because the person hasn't reduced the size. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so what I'm saying is that you can do all this G whiz stuff we're talking about, but if you're going to post it to a forum, in a way, you're it's it's a it's you're redundant because you're you're reducing the the resolution down so much you'll be able to lose a lot of the detail. So mm -hmm. that is F thirty six. Now, a uh, uh, let me move this over to the other screen. However, for for magazine photography, it is uh, essential. The, the my opinion about or feeling about that is that you should do the best you can because you can always go less than what you got. You know what I'm saying? You, you, yeah. Uh, uh, you give them to the magazine. If you're going to do a magazine, do the best shot you can do. They take it from there, and they if they got to reduce the resolution for the magazine, that's fine. It, but yeah. you can't go the other way. Yeah. Um, now, if you're doing magazine shots, just for one last point to close that out, is yeah. you, sh you should be working with your file in a TIFF format, a TIFF format, and not a JPEG, because a JPEG will will uh, will will screw with your photos. Your JPEG uses what's called lossy compression. That's what it is. Okay. It reduces the file size, and depending on what kind of the – you can select the compression ratio, but what that does is it softens the uh, 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 the image because you're, you're, you're compressing. Yeah. Well, uh, a TIFF, it doesn't. Every little pixel is just like it was when it was recorded. Yeah. It's a lot larger file size, and that's why we normally don't use it. Yeah. Now – this, um, um, I took a series of photos of this gondola because I was working on a, um, um, I was working on a light box, which is a, there's me taking a picture of the light box, uh, using the light box. Cool. And we can talk about that if you wish, but uh, um, a Let's light box. Just for now. Yeah, a light box is basically. A, a setup to allow you to take better static photo photographs. It's so uh, that your shadows are controlled underneath the object and nothing else. <laughs> it's it's the shadow and the the fact it's against a, a a smooth background. You don't. This is one of the early versions. I still had creases in my uh, uh, the material that the stuff sitting on. Yeah. Later pictures, I got rid of that by using basically some paper that's curved. Uh, but see, you you can move your lights where you want them and the, all that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, so. Oh, through the opaque sides. I just noticed that. Yeah. Oh, well, the, oh, I see it. The tub, if you go to Micromark and you purchase a. Oh my gosh. Well, okay. I'm just an example. 
You can go to B and H. Advice: If you go to Micromark to purchase something, go to Amazon to see if that same object is within the same price range. Well, the the point what I was going to make was that their light box they sell light boxes, and the uh, uh, it talks about that the the signs being diffused light. Okay. Yeah. And this opaque, semi-transparent uh, tub kind of does that. Yeah, totally. I agree. Uh, and I was, I was actually at Lowe's. And I saw this. And I said, "Well, it was like nine dollars for the tub, right?" And yeah. I'm like, yeah, this might work. It actually has. Mm-hmm. And well, I'm still, I agree. It has worked. And I'm still experimenting on where the lights should go. Uh, I would actually like to have. I just got a duct tape on for this photo. Yeah. But I would like to be able to move them like down and up and around. And the duct tape might still work, but you know, uh, these are just, uh, these are actually um, uh, dimmable LEDs. Oh, okay. So I can adjust the, the brightness. So, and later on, I took a photo where I put one of the, th there's, they came in a three LED strip with a little uh, dimmer switch box and thing. Yeah, I put, I put one down front and low, which gave some fill light to the front. So, no, that's that's just give you an idea. That's the setup that I'm uh, I'm using for these demonstrations. The first one that I took was this one right here. Yeah, and this is a work in progress, which I was trying to learn. How to use the program using the helicon focus and the light box mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you don't need a light box for helicon focus that's specific to photo for us for modelers photoing a static model okay. yeah um should we get into well i just want to uh, i'm gonna show I want to show my model so that I can explain uh, focal length a little bit more. I think we should hammer that point home uh, just so that the people who are on the fence about what focus lengths are. Okay. So uh, Ed showed you a model that's inside his light box, and the distance from the camera is about what? Six inches? Six to eight inches? Uh, let's say probably eight nine inches to the nearest point yeah okay so i hope i don't have any bad photos here <laughs> yeah make sure you don't have your uh, uh well <laughs> yeah well exactly so this photo here is oh it won't work i told you to get repair ed and I'm not prepared. Well, well, you can, you can. What else is new? You're the master. You can, you can <laughs> fix that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In post editing. Okay, March. So this is the photo that's been stacked. Can you see that? Um, no. No. Okay, so I gotta come back here this you see that yes okay so this is the scene that is uh it's four feet from the clouds in the back to the front of the wall is four feet so the pictures i want to show are in here Um, so where the heck did go? I'm being distracted here. <laughs> Sorry for my tardiness, Ed. Well, it, I'm, it's no problem with me. I mean, you can always, uh, uh post edit, post edit and get rid of the distraction. Yeah. Unless, yeah. unless, unless you, you know, you, you, you 
desk catches on fire or something, I suppose. <laughs> okay. I just had them and I moved. Oh, maybe they're still on the camera card. Yeah, there they are. Okay. Make sure I'm looking enthusiastic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Got to get the right screen here. Okay. Yep, that's it. Right. Okay, so this is my first focus. And as you can see, the, the beetle the bug in the front of the screen is in focus. <laughs> um, however, if I was to use three shots as I'm going to use in my explanation, this photo would not have worked. Is my audio coming through good? It, it's a little bit weak. How is that? that? That's better. That's a weird looking screen, too. <laughs> the, the number of photos that you require during a, a focus stack in large part depends on what aperture that you used. So you could use three photos, but the, there's always a trade off. Holy smokes, can you hear me yet? I can hear you now. I, it's like, did you fall asleep? No, my mic. I'm trying to fix my mic. Okay. How's that? Uh, great. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> okay. So Ed was talking about f-stop. I have no idea what f-stop this is. Um, but I'm going to go through the photo shots here in the stack to show you what this photo is built from. So this is the first photo. As you can see, the front of the image is in focus. The next photo will go... Actually, this one's focused in front of the beetle. You can yes. notice it in the bottom right-hand corner of the grass is in focus, and the front corner of the Streeter's gas station is in focus. So as we move through the stack, you'll see that the focus length goes farther back. We're getting to where the little man at the gas pump is in focus now. And then now the feed store is in focus. And now at in the back we've got the marine uh, Foss landing coming into focus. So this shot that was viewed over here. Come on, baby. I'm sure everybody's computers are all segmented <laughs> like this. <laughs> well, uh, I don't think it's everybody. Uh Unless you're really, unless you're really a uh, uh, picture guy. No, like I was thinking of the the TV series Monk. He would have, <laughs> he would have everything like exactly moved around so you find it. Yeah. So can you see that? Yes, I can. So that so all those shots are are crunched together by Helicon Focus to give you all those focus lengths into one photo. So that's my uh, presentation, Ed. Your turn. Okay. You had a low or pretty low uh, f-stop. Okay. And I can tell that because of your your um your, the depth of the focus oh okay so it was like a, i had a maybe a half an inch of focus focus distance the focus uh, that's in there we're getting into something that 
confuses the heck out of me trying to remember which is which. There's focal length, focal distance, focal lens length. Um, well, I'm, I'm talking about the, like, if we, it's the a focal stop the focal, the shows focal. that in one of my pictures would be an inch or four inches, you know, like the focus, the amount of picture in focus in that uh, four foot length. Yes. <laughs> it depends. It, it There's a, um, okay, let me, let me bring up. I, I've got a link to show you what that is. Let me let me bring a. Uh, I brought my browser up. Okay, I go to camera. I get to say. Uh, a, there's this website called a flexible depth of field calculator. And oh, wow. Oh yeah. Um, but it's kind of cool, I guess. Uh, you should see it now and yeah what this is i'll give you a, a, an example i looked up my uh, uh there's a thing here that says digital slr with cf of 1.6 x i had to look at the cf and what that is it's a uh they're comparing the lens of the camera to a 35 millimeter all right mm -hmm. Whatever that means, it's something to do with the 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 format of the film. You remember the old days when you had the the, the box cameras that you, the film were different, sort of like a, a a monitor where you got the the wide format and all that. Yeah. Well, my lens and it's also uh, uh, Ron's lens, as he has the exact camera I have. Eighteen fifty-five. Yeah, but yeah, that that lens is a has a CF of one point five. Oh, okay. Okay. So you put that in there. And now your aperture, I say you took an aperture of F8. Yeah. I have no idea what you said. You said you didn't remember, right? I I don't know. Okay. Your focal length, if you look at your, uh, your, a lot of the cam, the things, when you take a photo now, you can look at the, the photo on a, in a graphics program. Yeah. It tells you what the focal length was. Oh, okay. Right. So about a foot. Is like a 44 uh, millimeter, uh, if I remember right, from my camera. Uh huh. And that's got something to do with the lens itself, the lens focal length. That's uh, maybe how far the lens moves. I don't really know. Yeah. Uh, and then your your focus distance is how far away that your camera was, right? Yeah. So, let's say you were 12 inches away. Okay. okay. And it tells you. Right here, that the, the the total depth of field is fit is half an inch. Huh. If you were instead of twelve inches, you were you were you were forty eight inches. Then you got your focal depth is almost ten inches. Oh, I see. So the closer you are, the 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 smaller depth of field. Okay. Okay, which means that if you stop and think about it. The further you're get, your further you're focusing away from the camera, uh -huh. the less the number of photos you need to take, because the depth of field there is almost is nine point nine uh, with those settings. Yeah. Now I don't know the 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 the, the uh, um, oh I mean the focal length that's like you know when you're you're zooming in with your lens and the, the picture's smaller and the picture gets bigger and then you focus it. Yeah. That's like your focal length. Okay. Okay. So you got an eighteen fifty five. So if you got it twisted all the way to the right, yeah. So this shows fifty five. That's your focal length. It's fifty five. You got it twisted all the other way, it's eighteen. I, I'm I always photograph at uh my widest. Like uh I don't zo I don't photograph zoomed in. I yeah, try okay. not to. But, but that's what I, I try to that's, crop my photos. That's what lens fo uh uh focal length is. Okay. And so you're photographing it with this F8 at 48 inches, which is your backdrop. You had a nine, almost 10 inch depth of field. Oh, so I had a low f. f oh, I see what you're saying. Well, I'm, I'm guessing on your on your aperture. No, but this this helps me visualize it in my mind. Uh, and I'm guessing it was a lower around F8 simply because your depth of field was so small. Okay. 
Okay, quickly, Ed. How, yes. Where do I go to change my f-stop on this D3200 that you also have? Okay, one second. Let me uh, let me turn off so you can see me. Here's the camera. And yeah. up, on, up on top, let me see, where's the camera? Uh, you got just a little dial here. Yeah. Then we got I'll the record, look. info, and plus minus sign. Oh, below it, the round thing has got auto P S A M. This thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's your. Normally, when you're outside, you put on auto. The, the camera takes over and does its thing. Right? Uh, yeah, I put it on the run, the sport setting so that I can okay, take well, those, It takes yeah. a photo quick. Okay, those are. are, are, are the, Various automatic settings, um, you know, taking indoors, taking portraits, and that sort of thing, right? Yeah. Look on it where it says A. Turn a? It a. A. It, man, it stands for aperture. Underneath manual. Yes. Underneath M. Okay. Between the S for shutter. Yeah. And the M for manual. Oh, I see. That's your aperture. Uh, aperture priority, which means. You're setting the aperture, and the camera sets everything else. Oh, cool! If you turn it to S, you're putting shutter priority, so you're setting the the speed of the shutter, and it, the camera sets everything else. Okay. Manual does like all that crap, I and mean, you gotta be a smart guy to use that. Now, when you turn the aperture on the back, you see this little little dial right there? Yeah. The little, the little thumb screw. Yeah. They turn to aperture, point at something. Oh, I see. And you'll say F8. If you turn that, it goes 5, 6, it goes 9, it goes 13, it goes 18, it goes 22. Mine was at 24 when I first turned it on. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, that's because that's uh, that gives you a large depth of field. Okay. By depending on what you're photographing, uh, I use... In other words, if I'm outside taking a normal four, I just put it on auto and let the camera do its thing. It works fine for me. So I would just tur turn it from A to auto then? Yes, yes, or to your to your sports. Again, that is also an auto, but you're, 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 you're leaning towards whatever the sports thing does. I probably have faster shutter speed. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So in you're indoor doing, photography, you're doing, though. You're doing a portrait. You don't need a fast shutter speed. You're wanting to enhance the whatever it is, the yeah. room lights, all that sort of thing. A, a sports photograph, you need a fast shutter speed. You the, the picture don't blur. Yeah. So if you just set the auto, it's going to be general. That's like a, a, a you know an average, right? Yeah. So, but by turning to the A, the aperture priority. I'm taking control of the aperture because I'm taking pictures inside of models. Yeah. And so normally on my layout, oh, by the way, I tripod, for gosh sakes, use a tripod for this <laughs> type of photos. Um, <coughs> that's, that is like the most important thing of all. So indoor, what f-stop should I use for one of my indoor dioramas that are about two to four feet? Uh, for just a regular picture, as high an f-stop as a camera will let you use. F24. Or f36. It depends okay. on the light. The more light you got, the, the more the higher the f-stop the camera will. Because the, the sensor on the camera is looking at how much light you've got in your room. Yeah. Okay. So ISO. Yes. What's a good indoor ISO setting? Not okay. So, which is different in the light box than a model underneath lights. Okay, there's a setting on our camera called uh, that you can set to automatically set the ISO. Yes. I Does just that that, huh? Does that work good? Well, that's what normally, I, you know, it's, 
I'm not a photographer. I'm a, I'm a, I, I use a camera. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> I let the camera smarter than me about this stuff. So I put that, I let the camera set the, I, the I, ISO as to what it wants, right? So to fix that, you've got that in camera settings. Uh, you got that and you hit menu. And yeah, if you go to ISO sensitivity. Yeah, ISO sensitivity, hit OK. And control on. You see where it says auto IOS sensitivity control, on or off? Yeah. Now put that on for just uh, yes. Yeah. So you got your ISO sensitivity set to 800. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. What that means is uh, your maximum sensitivity is 6400s. Uh, that's where you can set like the minimum and maximum and all that sort of junk, right? Okay. Um, so when I take a photograph in real dark, dark situations, the ISO causes it to be real grainy. Yes. Is that a high uh, ISO yes. setting or a yes. low one? High. So if I moved my maximum down to 5,000, say, that uh, would... Well, I've been taking the, those photos I took of that uh, gondola. Yeah. I put it on ISO 100. So in my settings, I've got my minimum set to auto, or minimum shutter speed auto, maximum sensitivity 6400. Yeah. There's some good YouTube videos on that that goes into detail on that for the guys that actually know what they're doing. Yeah. For these last couple of days when I've been taking these, I've been experimenting with this uh, Helicon Focus, I found out... I didn't know about this this uh, auto ISO. Okay, I've got mine turned off right now. That way, if I crank my ISO down to one hundred, yeah, then it it it, it will adjust. And I I ISO at one hundred. I crank my um, uh, my uh, aperture down to say f eight. Mm -hmm. We'll get into that. This, besides, there's a reason for that, by the way. Uh, then the camera takes over and does what other shutter speed and other G whiz stuff it needs to do to make that picture work. Thank God. Okay. The reason it's grainy was back in the, in the film days, you could buy a, a nice color film that was like a, a, a ASA 100, right? Yeah. Same as, I think it's pretty much the same as the ISO. That's the film speed. Mm -hmm. uh, American Society of amorous photographers, whatever it was. Um, Analog photographers. <laughs> so, so <laughs> if but you could buy a black and white fan that had like a, a, a ASA 400, or ASA 800. Oh, Would yeah. I remember. Photo. Yeah. And the reason was it was a real fast film. And it's the same same thing with your digital photographers. You get your, your, your grainy that's when it bumps up you, you again go to youtube there's a uh, and do a search for like a, a, a d3200 setting iso or something like that and there's this guy that goes into really a lot of detail about the settings and what it means and the auto and all that sort of thing right mm -hmm. uh, but normally for the for normal photographs i leave it on let the camera do its own thing mm -hmm. but we're playing around here inside as model railroaders trying to figure out how to take good photographs inside in which case you need to take control of your ISO and the reason I know this is I posted the pictures on Facebook and the guy goes that sure looks grainy what's your ISO settings yeah and I said well I thought I switched them down to, to 100 but I looked in paint shop pro and it's it was like 6400 right oh, <laughs> like, oh. yeah and then what it was it was the it was the camera was taken over because it had the auto ISO set and it was doing its own thing, which was okay, I'll just bump that the you know the, the instead of so you get a faster shutter speed, right? 
Because it's saying, well, maybe this idiot don't have a tripod. That's I, I think I know what you're saying because I've been having this problem over the last few weeks where I've got great lighting in my shop. Like right. I've got uh, sun-facing windows, as you can see on my face right now, yeah. and I've got studio lighting out back. Uh, and my models were looking dark. And I was like, well, what the heck is going on here? I can't figure it out. But it, I, I'm pretty sure it was my auto ISO settings uh, going out of control. Well, here's the deal. It don't take that long to turn that off. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know now. You just taught me. Photo uh, on the inside, uh, as we're talking through here, tripod aperture priority, mm -hmm. F8. Let's say for your lens, by the way, F8. Okay. Uh, okay, let's, let's stop right there and let's talk about that a little bit. Sure. A lens in a camera is a stack of lenses. Yeah. As yeah. everyone knows, there is a uh, uh, mirror. There's a point where the camera makes the sharpest image okay mm -hmm. um, and for our camera it's between f.56 and f8 and what that means is there's a um there's a and i i did say so f6.9 what nothing no here's i'm, I'm going to show you on screen uh Okay, share. This is called. This is a focus testing page. Okay, and this is so you can DIY check your own lens. But basically, what they does is is a bunch of little vertical lines. You can see them, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, what they do is, if you look at this picture here, what they're doing is they they, they position at a forty five degrees. To the camera is when they're looking at it they they're in other words the point right the oh, center of focus well this is it goes out of focus the further it gets the closer it gets the camera the further away from the camera and that's what they're testing with these pictures here oh i see uh, and so they're saying at what point is it reasonably clear and that's subjective to a certain extent right yeah but that's what they're doing so here's a uh here's a picture with a uh, uh, a high depth of field, mm -hmm. like I said, like a f thirty six. Yeah, three. It goes to three, almost to three. Almost in three. Side. But the the problem is, if you're taking that 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 magazine photo, that these lines aren't precisely sharp. They're a little bit blurry, and that's the problem with a uh, a high f stop number. While you go back to the uh, um, a low f stop the the depth of field is smaller but the individual lines are sharper okay that's the basic the whole basic thing hmm. for the normal layout photo yeah this is fine you're your f30 you f24 you f36 and that sort of thing because again you're you're publishing this to a, a website yeah you're not going to be able to tell because you're having to reduce the resolution just to post it on the internet so, Ed, I wonder if uh, Hangouts will uh, handle a demonstration of uh, Helicon in, ac in, in uh, action. Uh, yes, it will. Um, <laughs> I'm glad we're smart enough to do this stuff. Let's see. Um, thing is, do I still have any of my photos uh, I'm look I'm looking at my stack I think uh, almost done the tractor well not almost done I got a letter dry for a day for I, oh that's looking pretty good I know if I'd want a fuel tank right in front of my legs <laughs> um, multitaskers let's see I'm trying to see if I've got any pictures I can use that, have, uh, that I haven't erased. <laughs> well, 
Well, maybe I'll maybe I'll run mine. Yeah, uh, go ahead. We'll we'll we'll, we'll talk through it because it it's the process that's important. Yeah. So I'm just gonna. I, I, I tend to delete once I once I stack them. I tend to delete the. Uh, you know, I just save space, and it. it, it, it I've I got know, a massive, I got a massive hard drive now that uh, my kids go through every month and erase my model photos and leave just uh, family photos. What do they do that for? Well, I just do a raw dump. I just dump hundreds of gigabytes of photos. <laughs> Uh, I've got a, a terabyte drive now and a three terabyte drive that's sitting in my my sock drawer, and the the three terabyte drive gets updated uh, once a month now. Ever yeah, since okay. my hard drive fall. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So hindsight's one hundred percent, as we said before. That's where you were sitting in. Um, uh, uh, down here in my area and you drop your hard drive yeah <laughs> which is not the best thing in the world no uh, no the real crappy thing is uh, I'm just uh, moving files around right now um, but uh, the real crappy thing was is I dropped it and I was like oh no and then I hooked it up and it worked and then I turned around and kicked the power cord of the uh, <laughs> laptop which sent yeah. it to the floor again and uh, no worky worky. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but you're so funny. <laughs> oh, there was hours of content too on that that hard drive. Like, pff, I'd still be putting out videos from that job now. Like, I, I I totally did tutorials, stuff that I had no time to produce. My daughter's videos, we had like 10 videos almost finished on that hard drive. It was, oh, so depressing. Anyways, so I'm going to load up Helicon Focus and then get that scre screen shared. Okay, so you tell me what to do here. Okay. Or maybe tell me what I'm doing here. Or, or maybe say what I'm doing as I'm doing it. I don't know. <laughs> can you see that? Yes, I can. Uh, what Ron's doing here is he's open Pelican Focus. He can either drag and drop his images into the screen, or he can use his file as he's doing uh, and find his and open them up. So what he's going to do is he's going to get his his photos, his stacked photos, and load them into the Pelican Focus to process. Mm. Right here. Remember, understand what we're doing here is you're sampling a series of photos at different points, and then you're going to stack. He's got, he's got how many? You got, the, you got eleven photos. Yep, eleven photos. Now, and the helicon focus, you can you can check or uncheck the ones if you don't want to use them. Now, but, I. I the one photo at the beginning of the stack, had, I, I moved it a little bit so the background, you could see a black image in the corner. So yes. that, that's how I keep all my images separate. And I know uh, Ken Patterson puts his hand in front of the lens to uh, show the division between stacked photo groups. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say there, um there's also a retouch function here, by the way, that if you stick a hand through one photo, that you can uh, retouch and remove it, but that requires a Helicon Focus Pro, uh, which I don't have. Uh, oh. the, usual, the usual thing, you know, it's like, well, if you want to retouch it that many times, you have to buy the Pro version. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Huh. We'll see if we can. There's no that. such thing as a free lunch. So yeah, well, I've got the better. I've got other program. We'll we'll talk about that later. Right. So what about the rendering methods here? The rendering methods, basically, what you should do is just try and render it in each of them. But 
it's um, it's the helicon focus they go through it and what that is it depends on what you're photographing if it has like a lot of sharp edges one of these works better oh, okay uh, if it's uh, a landscape one work better uh, I prefer really method C for mm -hmm. For That's my cool. model photography, it seems to work for me better. I I was using uh, method A and B, but for no particular reason. I was just trying them out, and I was noticing oh. that A would uh, not do it sometimes, and B wouldn't do it sometimes. And when I tried C, I just saw it work great. But uh, I like method A because it's Oh, actually, Method C does it too. I'm gonna just render the stack now. And we'll show yes. the. So you can see in the bottom right corner that it's rendering, and uh, then it gives you another screen that'll take the finished bitmaps, right? Yeah. And uh, average them together, or no, not average. Well, it, it depends in. on uh, uh, if you use Method A, it's a weighted average. Yeah. Method B uses the depth map. In other words, your uh, your depth from close to rear, and then in method C, I have no idea. That turned out pretty good. That looks great. So, what about retouching now? Okay. Suppose what what it was, you can you can bring up a. Um, uh, on your left, you can like click one of the uh, uh, the the ones, one of your eleven images, and oh. then when you click on the right side, it will paint over the the stack photo with the 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 data from the one area. Oh my God! So if there's a part of the screen, so say if there's a, a bug, a, like a like a a bug crawling across one photo. Then you can bring up the photo without the bug, go to the stack photo, and, and draw right on top, and it will paint over from that photo that you selected. No shit. Yeah. Sorry for my language. But, oh, my goodness. Uh, I'm just pointing out that, that I'm, I I don't have the pro version of Helicon Focus, and it told me that I was using I was using, I couldn't do that much uh, retouching without buying the, the higher version. Hmm. Wow. But yeah, that's and that's and that's sweet. Yeah, that's really sweet. But so that then you can go to a little glitch and and, and reflect. There was an example they gave artifact. Where yes. A guy was uh, a photographing a an insect, right? Yeah. And that in one of the pictures is is his antennae had in the stack photograph, his antenna had moved. Right? Yeah. Well, he looked like he had like, you know, four or five antennas. So what they did, they went to one picture, had a real good, where his antenna wasn't moving, and they, they, they uh, reached touch it and just drew on top, used that to, to paint over the stack photograph. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah, I never looked through this program. I, you know, <laughs> you can do text and everything in the in the oh, yeah. program yeah. itself. So credit your own work. Boom. Well, is that or or I mean, it it helps uh, if you're posting. If you were doing a on your your website, if you're doing a a, a a tutorial, you could say you know step one, blah blah blah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you can you got, if you look at your save options, you got a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, I can go right to TIFF. Well, not just that. I'm talking about you can you can export a 3D model and using the 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 uh, the right stuff, you can you can you can actually uh, it's it's a pseudo 3D, I guess, but. Uh, there's a bunch of neat stuff like that. Oh, like 3D for uh, skinning? I 
again, the if you look through the uh, the tutorial on Helicon, I'll check Focus it out. I'll check that out. That's interesting. They it's basically uh, you can kind of move it a little bit. I, I think it's kind of it's kind of to me it's kind of a uh, hokey kind of thing, but still it's fun to play with, from what I can see. Um, Go back to your uh, to your to your stacked photo. What's that? Go back to your stacked photo. Let's mm -hmm. let's 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 um uh critique. Can you see that? Yeah. Look down. That's at your zoom, by the way. That's good. I just noticed that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> zoom down on your uh, your lower right below, below your text. Yeah. See how it's blurred right there? Yeah. Okay. That means that you needed a photo down in that area in focus. Uh huh. And now here comes. No. Here we know that there was a photo that had that focus because I, I commented on it about 10 minutes ago. Um, yeah, but was it focused that far down? Go back to your rendering. Uh, and um, find, see if you can find it. Okay. This brings that this brings up a point with your ability to focus. I'm visually impaired, so this is uh, a problem I'll have big time with. So that could be the issue there, couldn't it? Is that my first photo? They're not in order. See, this is the first photo. You look at the bottom corner; it's blurry. Second photo clear third photo that goes back to the car again if i remove this first photo just just uncheck it and just render it again yeah so reset this oh we're going method two this time dang it what'd you do <laughs> Well, I just pressed rendered it, it, and if it, it picked uh, method B, so as you can see, method B does something different, and it's combining the photos on the fly, which is kind of really neat. Yeah, well, it's doing the death map, so it's it's a saying. Okay, you took a uh, uh, um, what? What, Miss Kitty? You, you want a treat? Wow, that's interesting. Um, but we're getting the part here is how to how do you focus with your camera? And that's a, that, that is a big that's a big part of this whole little discussion we need to have. Look how it focused the bottom corner of the screen of the photo there. It's not out of focus anymore. It's kind of. Uh, It's flattened. Yeah, I see that. That's not, it's it's an ideal solution. Go, really. go to your re, go to your retouching. Yeah. Well, on the right side, click till you find one where it's in focus. I think it's this one. Okay. Go down to your right side and try to retouch it. Oh, F9. Huh. I need a better photo. That's the problem. Okay. So we now, now we need to talk about how to ensure that you, because it's hard to focus on a car, or it's hard to focus on a man well, my camera is too close to the grass in the front of the layout. Okay, that's that is another thing we need to talk about. 
Because my lens won't focus that close. Yes, it will. Because that's a uh, uh, what's the word? That's one of the things you need to do before you start taking the picture. Yes. Okay. This is why okay. you're the man, Ed. Yes. Now, because remember, I've been playing with this for a couple of days now. <laughs> we were talking about the lens focal length, right? Yeah. Okay, and we're talking about that if you if you spin the um, the focus ring all the way to uh, our camera comes with a stock eighteen dash five five millimeter lens. Yeah, that means it has a focal length from eighteen to fifty five millimeters. Mm hmm. And oh, so I should be able to focus from eighteen millimeters away. Uh, I guess I'm not really is sure. Too symbolized. <laughs> but, but the point is, what I what you do is is you go to take that photo, right? Yeah. And you 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 move you look through the camera or you look at the uh, the uh, little display. Yeah. And you focus on the back and you focus up real close. If you cannot focus, and you, in other words, you you cannot focus down to. Uh, uh, the bottom near, corner, near bottom corner. Then you take your tripod and you move it back about four inches. Yeah. And then you try again and you try again until that, that nearest area you can focus on that area. That's where you. Then you can move your um, your 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 lens back and forth to it, it fills the screen up. That's what you do. That's the uh, the start. So I just want to explain a little bit. So. Um, the reason I'm getting the lack of focus in the front bottom right hand corner is because I photograph all my models with my zoom out. I don't want to be zoomed in at all. I want to use all of my camera sensor to take a photograph. So mm -hmm. my camera is literally uh, two and a half to three inches away from the Beetle car. So. Right. Yeah. When Ed says I have to pull it back four inches, that's going to bring that bottom corner into focus, and then I can crop my photo with my photo editing program later to tighten up the photo without losing any resolution. Well, here's, here's the deal. We're – okay, I don't know how to put this. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice here. <laughs> don't be nice to me. People okay. love it. Don't get all bent out of shape about filling your entire sensors and all this stuff. Take my word for it. You want to take a picture of this. How close you can focus depends on the lens, okay? Yeah. I have a macro lens that will let me almost touch the object I'm photographing. No way. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a macro. It's, it's made for that. Hmm. Your 18 to 55 millimeter lens is um, bottom of the line. It's, it's actually level. pretty good. It's actually a pretty good lens, according to the, the photography guys. Yeah. Um, it, well, it's coupled, actually, coupled with a 24 megapixel CMOS is pretty good. Oh. <laughs> I'm just saying that I I, I did a, I looked at a uh, uh, a review on one of the photography sites and they actually gave it pretty they rated it pretty high. Oh, good. It's not a Ferrari, but it's like a it's like a 350Z. Okay, it's 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 not the average. It's it's better than average, but then I don't want to pay two thousand dollars for a lens. Speaking of two thousand dollars for a lens, yes. The Nikon, D, the Nikon D3200 that we're both talking about yes. that's capable of all this stuff except uh, for remote focus is uh, – I got mine for like four ninety nine Canadian. Yeah, it's, it's like $450, something like that. Around. Yeah, and I heard that the D3300 that's coming out now – has GPS on it and a few other things. So yeah, it's a nice see, camera, and it's it's an entry level DSLR cost. That is what our cameras are. We're we're the Walmart DSLR. 
<laughs> no, I, seriously, it's where I bought mine. It was at Walmart. Oh, it, really? Okay. Yeah, it is the low-end Nikon DSLR. It's the entry level. Yeah. Uh, but but the, specifically, the D3100 had a, a, a 12 megapixel CMOS, and it didn't do uh, uh, HD video at 1920. And, and it also did not have uh, the little uh, little screen. Yeah, yeah, the, the it, viewfinder it, in the back. Yeah, you had to look through the viewfinder in the back. Yeah, yeah. So the D3200 is a big upgrade from the D3100. Uh, it is uh, uh, actually uh, comparable, if not a better photo than uh, lots of cameras that are uh, more expensive than it because of the size of its sensor in it. And the 3300 that came out this year or is coming out is going to be even better than that. So it's a cost-effective camera, and you can do anything you want with it. Well, see, what they do is they add a little more to the next model. Yeah. Uh, for example, I think the 3200 can take um, – it takes you can put it on uh, – uh, so it would take multiple pictures. It takes like three units in one second. Yeah. You go to a higher level and it take five in a second, and that yeah. sort of thing, right? Yeah. But I am seriously thinking about buying a new camera. Oh. And the reason is, uh, this camera we have will not do certain things. Bracketing. Bracketing is one of them, and for people that don't understand, is that it will take a a, a, a picture. It will also take a picture that would be bracketed so it's a little bit underexposed and a little bit overexposed. Mm -hmm. so for HDR? Quick. I'm sorry? That's that's basically for HDR, high damage. No, 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 think about it. You, you've taken pictures that you have to put in a, uh, a graphics program. you got to dark them up or lighten them up or something like this. Yeah. By bracketing, it just doesn't. You get three photos to start with. So if you're not, in other words, the camera, when you got sound automatic, it's doing, it's doing, there's one of the settings in our camera uh, where it averages the light, right? Yeah. Of the scene. So if you got shadows and bright areas, the picture may not come out right because there's shadows and brightly lit areas you know, of something you're photographing. Yeah. So in order to get a good photograph, you may have to underexpose it or overexpose it. Because oh, you expose it, the bright's going to get brighter, but the shadows are going to pop out. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's one use of bracketing. Um, but the other thing is that, dear listeners, Ron and I run into, when we were looking at Helicon Focus, but... We ran into it with another program when we were talking about using our camera as a webcam. And it we turned and found out that, yes, you can do that, but not with our camera. <laughs> um, there's a program called uh, SparkleCam. And SparkleCam, let me close screen here. I'm, let me share a screen real quick here. I'll be right back. I'm going to refill my car. Well, he's refilling. Um, uh, hopefully it's coffee and not uh, hard liquor, but you know, each to his own. Um, we were talking about doing this hangout and I said well wouldn't it be neat if you could live feed from your HD or your uh, uh, digital SLR and you could actually if you could live feed from your camera make it to a webcam then you could actually um, show Focusing 
and uh, uh, as, as I'm as I'm focusing in on a uh, uh, a model, if 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 my digital SLR would live feed, then I could say, hey, Ron, this is how you focus. This is how you do this. And Ron said, oh, wow, that's a good idea, Ed. And so I looked and I found this program and it says it would do all this GWIS stuff, except um, uh, it says in here somewhere um, that we can't do it with our camera. <laughs> um, I can never find uh, where the somewhere in here there's a there's a um, there's a page that shows um, which cameras will work with it and which won't and the uh, uh, why I can never find the stupid thing. I don't know. Uh, hmm. So anyway, Ron and my camera will not work with uh, um, this program. Oh, they are right here. Sporty cameras. Nikon 5500, Nikon 70, 750, Nikon 7100, and so on, but not the Nikon D3200. So, and we ran into the same thing with Helicon Focus. When um, you go to Helicon Focus and you go um, products, uh, um, And you find out that, well, once again, our camera will not will not uh, work. Let's see. I was trying to find. I could have sworn. Uh, Anyway, anyway, it doesn't matter. And there's a there's a there's a page here that shows, uh, uh, says uh, Helicon Focus uh, supported cameras right here. So, and on this one here, it specifically says that the D thirty three D three thousand to D 3300 are not supported. They don't have whatever the electronic gizmo that is necessary. So I am actually looking at the the Nikon 5300. Ron, are you still there? No, you're not. I'm talking to myself. Oh, Ron. Ron. Ron, did you fall asleep again? Hello. Uh, hello. Trying to get a hold of LeBron because he's disappeared. Hi, I'm back. Okay, I was wondering. Uh, um, what were you saying there? I was talking about that our cameras are not supported by Sparkle Cam or Helicon Focus, which prompts me to consider alternatives. But the thing is, is that um, on one hand, remote viewer 
like like there's got to be a way to get this it's to be done like there's got to be a way it can be done there there is a way and i i took my gondola photo yeah uh in fact uh my one second let me show you what i i never did show you what i ended up with after i the, like realistically part. to to show uh video focus i could just take a video of uh focusing through a stack well there was other reasons why i was thinking about upgrading to a camera it's not just that one thing right um yeah i'm just gonna like 300 for example the the um the little viewing screen yeah well, well, well you, you know how when uh you've seen the uh video cam um uh video cameras where the little screen pops out and you can twist it around and look at different angles oh yeah yeah it would do that so you can like put the camera way down the ground and turn your screen up and look yes. down you can look at what you're recording while yeah. you're recording yourself yeah. Uh, so, I mean, there's other things in addition that's other G whiz stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to say I'm I'm going to do it, but I'm considering it. Uh, but <laughs> we both know what that means. <laughs> well, that means I just I just spent over five hundred dollars on my cats in the last couple of weeks. So. <laughs> it's like um, the let, hobbies are here. everything to a retired man. Let me show you. Um, this is a picture that I ended up taking. This is like 27 shots. Holy smokes. But if you look, look at this. Now, now uh, at 27 shots, you're not focusing on parts of the photo. You're just moving the lens in the most minute measurements okay. right all right that what you're doing what i did since i don't have the g whiz stuff yet <laughs> is and not i've got a bottle of zap c8 yeah um let me, let me stop sharing so i can show you my bottle Oh, where's it? Where's the camera? There it is, right there. Okay. So I set this thing just in front of the gondola, and I because the it says Zap C A in nice black letters against a white banner. I can focus on that. Move it to one side, snap a picture. Move it on this gondola, even with the end of the uh, the gondola. Do okay. the same thing. Move yeah. it halfway between there, and so I'm. Between the ribs, the vertical ribs on the gondola. Yeah, I'm not looking at the picture anymore. That's, oh, oh, that's because I stopped sharing to show <laughs> my picture. Now, between the uh, the, so I take a picture right here. Yeah. And then I would I would move the bottle to like in this area. Mm-hmm. You know, focus then here and then like a third of the way between the two ribs two-thirds of the way the next rib so i i walk my way down it that way i can oh. that bottle each time okay finally this photo is the way it looked and then once you got a um a good graphics program and it works here's how i did it with some tweaking now i thought that come out pretty good yeah, that does look good. I like the contrast of the the top two boards. Like you can see the color variations. Well, really that's because that strip wood. This is a Bachman gondola that I added those uh, that extension. Yeah. Uh, that's just strip wood with some strip wood things. But I want to say this is tweaked, and it's maybe a little bit too tweaked for some people. Yeah. But I, this was a sharpened. It was white. Um, there was, uh, I forget, you know, a contrast uh, uh, boost and that sort of thing. 
Saturation boost, yep. Yeah, I messed with the saturation, all that sort of stuff. But you know, you can, you can, and that looks a pretty good picture right there. Yeah, it does. Um, and as you said, the focus was done using that little um, ball of uh, super glue. I'm thinking what would be nice would be a, if you could get a real clear, very sharp image of, uh, you remember the old days when the, uh, uh, the TV would go off and you'd have this. Uh, the bars? The bars. You know, like yep. crosshairs. And that was to, to focus, for them to focus on that screen, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because they, they had bars. They had like a like a, like a bullseye. With it, it, it's, it synced it too, right? Uh, or was it just color correction? I, I think it was there. I think it was so they could do their focusing. I'm, okay. I think if you had something like that on a little stand, because what I'm doing with this glue ball is I'm focusing on where it says Zap CA because it's nice and clear. Yeah, I'm using my weld bond glue. Yeah, same same thing. Is is the problem here I've run into is if this if you're on the layout trying to do this, most of the time your layout is not flat. Yeah, the model wants to fall over, you know. Yeah. Uh, so you might want to get something like a three-legged something, like a uh, a glue up your little strip wood thing with like a little target with a, that you can focus on and have three legs. That way, it would basically balance on anywhere. Most important tool in the shop is the jigs you make. Yeah. Uh, so. As Ron was pointing out, no, you don't have to buy all this G Whiz stuff. Oh, speaking of G Whiz stuff, <laughs> I gotta show this. Uh, beyond, um, beyond the, um, um, we were talking about the Helicon remote that will. Uh, um, well, we haven't talked about Helicon remote. We talked about why our cameras wouldn't use it. Helicon remote is where you can do a focus stack from your computer. What it is is the with appropriate com uh, camera, not yours or mine. <laughs> 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 what it does, the camera can take over the focus control of the camera, right? And so what you do is your photo that you took of that that scene, right? Mm-hmm. And assuming that you move your your uh, your tripod back a little bit so you can get the uh, the near part in focus. Yeah. You turn on your helicopter remote and you zoom in on that one little area, right? Yeah. And then the camera comes up. Uh, let's actually let's actually go to it. We'll bring it up and products helicopter remote. And we'll, this control right here, and if, this is the, uh, a video. You can run the video. I'm not going to do that, but there's like an A and a B button, and up, these little controls up here lets you micro zoom. So you zoom in, or micro focus, I should say. So you zoom in, and you hit these little buttons up here, and it, it focuses like 0.1 millimeter and that sort of thing, right? Holy smokes! And then when you when you you everything's what you want, you click. Okay, that sets A. That's your near focus. Then okay. you go into the the far focus, and you do the same thing, and you set B. And then the, the computer automatically, or you can enter in how many steps to go, um, your ASA and all this sort of stuff. It goes click 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 click, and it goes up, and takes all your photos. No way. Yes. Uh, if you look at the actual. Welcome. She goes. I'm going to set the nearest and focusing. Um, let's go. I would class the classify that as G Willikers features. Look what she's doing. Yeah, I can. She's she's, she's focusing. You're <laughs> close, right? Yeah, I'm zooming in. No way. That's not quite right. It's a little bit away from the edge. I use the small step keys to move the focus all the way to the edge. Yes. In the fast preview function to check the focusing again. Oh. The preview shot. Ed, you're gonna cost me like a thousand dollars. 
Love it. To zoom in to see if all the details are in focus. <gasps> see, she's setting her near focus right now. When this is yeah. done, I can save A, the nearest focusing point. Next, I'll move the focus towards infinity using Helicon Remote's arrow keys. For this, I don't use the auto-focusing function because the program will lose track of the focus position. To check the focusing, I'll zoom in. So what she's I'm doing here is she's setting the farther she's going to need to the right position. Right. Now, this is something I do with my camera is I'll use my viewfinder on the back, the, the view screen on the back, and I'll uh, digitally zoom in the viewfinder itself. Okay. Then focus my lens on that spot and then zoom out and then take my photo. And, and what that does is because I'm visually impaired, it allows me to focus in on a small object in the photograph and focus that. And then it's a set and forget for me. See, that's what she's doing here. She's yeah. zooming in. Uh, and if you look at down here, the computer set up to take 29 shots. Damn. And, and see, you got all the other stuff. The time, the aperture is set on eight. The ISO is set for two hundred. The EV. So, um, the length of the lens and the correction factor. Oh, the correction, the correction factor allows you to fine tune the program for your specific. I mean, lens. isn't this cool? Now that all the necessary parameters are set, I can start shooting the stack. By the way, you can always interrupt the process by pressing so, stop. So she goes through this process, and the camera. Is is stepping through, shots will take and it's doing all the while. focusing. So I'll skip this step. That's and what I'm talking about. The program will download. Well, this is not the. Camera, this is not the. the, the, the this is not even the high the speed stuff yet. Stacking. There's even a better one. I'll open Helix and Focus and process the stack using the default parameters. Let's watch how the depth map changes while the program blends the shots. And she used a method B there. Yeah. And that's got to do because. Here's the result of very colors that I never would be able to achieve with a single shot. But because she's using a, the computer controlled depths, I guess. And there's a sharp the edge. Remote also allows advanced exposure bracketing. You can set up. But she goes into exposure. some other stuff, right? And, but if you really want to spend some money, <laughs> <laughs> Good little giggle. That was a pricey giggle. Oh uh, well, this is only fifty bucks. Oh, okay. Okay, okay but you can also set the flash parameter. I mean, uh, uh, it, 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 you gotta have Helicon Focus for it to work with. But look at this. Finally, Helicon Remote can also control external stepping devices, such as the stack shot macro rail. The program. No. The camera's position using steps as small as 0.01 millimeters, which allows you <laughs> no. to use a tiny option. This is a step Download motor controls a that. Day trial version of Helicon Remote from our website and try the, the 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 that that focus rail is it uses a step motor and there's a computer control and who's the computer and so you can go to 0 0.01 millimeter steps. No. Now, that, logically, that's only for, you know, somebody's going to take pictures of cells or insects and that sort of thing, right? Yeah. But still, when I said, yeah, the, the, the Helicon remote wasn't even, that went in the hula stuff, that was, well, no, it, it works with that. So the Helicon focus, I mean, I'm sorry, the Helicon remote can work with that step rail jobby. And instead of... Oh. Two um, steps, you'd have 290 steps. So, Ed, we've talked about Helicon Focus today. What else would you like to – what have we missed about Helicon Focus? And what can people use if they don't want to pay for Helicon Focus? All right. Um, first of all, there's, there's two things about that is – whether you need to stack your photos and the other one is a a, a other stop it i'm kind of cat begging for treats over here um now let me bring up a program i have called um uh, if i can remember what it's called wait a minute it's called so combined z yeah combined zm okay i hear 
Uh, there's actually a combined something else, uh, a, a later version. Um, that, but this this is um, okay. This is combined ZM. It's the same thing. You go file, uh, you go new, and you go you find your uh, uh, like image one, image two. You hit open. You go uh, there. Go up. You go uh, macro, do stack, and it 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 does the same thing that. Helicon Focus does, but this is open source. This is just geeks. It it doesn't have the the manual, the obvious next steps, and stuff like that in in the program itself. It's just it's, it's, it's just it's it's open source. It's free. It's just it's uh it's Ed and Ron that that goes. Hey, we can improve the program by doing this, right? Yeah. And so it's. So, it's it's so this is for a technically minded person. They could use this. They could struggle well, through this. It's it's not that much of a struggle. I just I didn't do anything but do the stack, do the all map, right. right? It's got all sorts of little uh, G whiz stuff. You see, it's creating a low pass filter, and it tells you what it's doing. It's creating a high pass filter now. Um, and give it a second. This is slower than the other one, but being free. Uh, Okay, and here we go. There's the um, the stacked photo. Oh, that's my 3D prints, by the way. <laughs> but Have you found any limitations on Combine Z as compared to Helicon? Well, it's not as it's in photo quality, maybe, because that's all, the, all that really matters. Not really. Not really. It's because it's it's doing a lot of the same stuff. It's just not as uh, uh, high speed. Mm. You can do weighted average correction, soft stack, hard stack. You can uh, you get all sorts of uh, uh, you can fill gaps. You uh, so again, this is more techy. Now there's there's one other thing though too. When I first looked for Combine Z, I read something about the pro the program source was hacked and that there's a hacked version out there is that true i don't know yeah i think there's i think uh something happened with that program and the first time i went to go download it i found uh the off uh, the programmer's blog and he said don't download this version of the program because that's a hacked version so keep your eye out for uh, free and open source software because sometimes it's been compromised. The, 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 I use uh, Symantec's uh, 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 virus protection, Nort, Norton, you know, Norton Antivirus, and when I download a file, I've always wait because it, it looks at the file. It inspects it. And it'll come up and tell you if it's safe or if it's not. So, mm. uh, um, yeah, you know, I have a niece that she goes, "Oh, my computer got a virus." I said, "Well, my God, didn't you update your virus?" Oh, I don't run that. <laughs> it was like, "Are you just insane?" I don't run it either. I always. But I I, I live my life in the cloud, though. Really, I'm I am bought why. into the. Google. You're, you live in the clouds, all right. Um, anyway, this was combined ZM. Uh, no, I don't want to say anything. So the, the question is, do you need Helicon Focus? And the answer is, it depends. Uh, if I'm taking a photograph of my layout, I don't use Normally, I don't use Helicon, uh, a, a stacker, a photo stacker. I have, and depending on what you're doing, it can sometimes give good results. But it's not, uh, uh, it's not necessary. Put it that way. Um, if uh, um, nor normally, if you will use a um, uh, a high 
f-stop and a tripod you can get some excellent photos and ron's gone are you gone again there he is ron has no, i'm here oh okay i thought you'd gone to the little girl's room um uh i was trying to find a an example of um uh, No, not that one. Uh, if you hear a squall in the background, that's my that's my cats. Yeah, I noticed that. Uh, they're doing their oh helicon focus. What I got here, Jukes. Okay, I forgot about these. These are are this is a series of photographs I was. I was taking of my uh, uh, testing out Helicon Focus, trying to get from this is about 28 inches to the back wall, but about six inches from the camera here where the water is. Um, and the stack photo, the third attempt, here's the third attempt. Um, but if I was just going to take a picture to share and share and show to um, on the forum, I wouldn't use this. It's just this is more like what you'd want to do if you're if you're uh, not this specific scene, but if you're if you're wanting a thing for a magazine shot, if you're just going to share it on a forum or such, then go you know F thirty two. And take a picture yeah um to just to say something about that i've been submitting articles for years and hasn't and i haven't been accepted for an article yet well i i've been accepted for two articles this year and that's since i've got uh helican focus so my writing skills are crap but the photographs are getting better <laughs> would you get accepted <coughs> can you can you tell us who you uh Railroad model craftsman, and oh, really? there's, yeah, there's a possible possible model railroader, but I've got two into railroad model craftsmen. I need to do that. I need to do some of that. What what was the articles? Can you tell us that? Uh, a, little, a, a little hint. Well, they're they're about the oh, what were they? <laughs> um. Oh, it was the loads the 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 bachman flat car with the loads the big the real was on it yeah the pdc models yeah i uh did a review of those and how i built them article and another one was on uh making waves and another one was uh about my marine module uh marksbury's cove maybe i can wiggle it in one of those articles you know bill gill does articles for rmc yeah and I I did a thing for him the other day. It was a uh, uh, a three D. In fact, I can share that because it's not secret. Well, just the, I wanted to want to say one more thing about railroad model craftsman is that I was told this year that since the the magazine's been sold, yes. uh, their their focus is on craftsman modeling, yes. uh, scratch building, and uh, the act of building and finishing detailed scenes uh they they don't really want to go in like i i was guided to go into that avenue you know they said go into your craftsman stuff we love it right and that's like i think they're really trying to reclaim the builder point of view as opposed to the model railroaders new modeler point of view yeah they <coughs> Excuse me. This is pointed out on uh, uh, <coughs> <coughs> I was pointed out on uh, um, I was in a model real radio chat and that was actually uh, one of the points. So I did this sign for Bill Gill. Now this is only three sixteenths of an inch from here to here. 
the 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 what's the sign made for the cricket? He wanted a sign for a building. H, it's H O scale. It's a um, actually it was it's a yeah here he is. This is a picture. Uh, this is the picture he sent me. Uh, uh, that's not. And he he put the uh, the 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 writing on there I think using the graphics program, so he just got it. And the problem is, I sent him two kinds. I sent him two. Uh, I made two. If you look at this, this one here, the the lettering is actually on the sign. Yeah. This one here, the letters are uh, they're on a little it's on a sprue. They're separate letters, right? Yeah. Well, because it's only three sixteenths of an inch tall, he want he said, well, he would like to clip these off on the little the little sprue pins. But this is how am I going to drill the holes? So what I did is yesterday I sent him a a, a basically a pinout diagram by you know three D because this is done in SketchUp. Yeah. And I said, you know what you could do. I, I said, I'm a, I'm, I export as a PDF, and I said, a, a laser cutters will take a, at least some of them will take a, a PDF as a input for the drawing, and all you want is the holes. So, and he knows some people that's got laser cutters, so he's going to try to get the laser cutter to punch <laughs> the holes for the little pins that the letters fit in. It won't work. Why not? Because it's a flame. It's a laser flame. But all, all it needs. All it needs is a hole punched in. Laser cutters are are nice, but they're they're not everything. I didn't. I, I, I know that you understand how the laser cutter works, and I imagine it would work because you've got it figured out. But I, laser cutters have as a it cuts a kerf. Yeah. Okay. A, a, a kerf that's not. A forty-five degree angle kerf. It's like a serrated saw. You but, know, but, 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 the, the, the laser the blade, blade expands. It expands, and um, uh, well, a laser cuts like a dot matrix printer. Here's what is what point, happened. Here's the point. Here's oh my, what did my zoom on a stupid thing? We got to wrap this up in about. Ten minutes though, too, Ed. So okay, uh, <laughs> we've been two uh, hours. Oh well. Uh, here's a here's here's what I sent him. This is basically I I, oh, I, I, I cut the uh, um. Let me try to zoom in so I can. Uh, there we go, right here. Go full screen there. So what I did was send him this. This is basically what I did was uh, in my 3D program. I cut the letters away and just had the the stalks. Yeah. And but what he was wanting to do was maybe snip them off the sprue, so it was just the little pins that held the letter held the letters to the sprue, and just insert them in holes. So my idea was, well, you want to make a sign, take a piece of basswood, and have somebody laser cutter just punch some holes by this pattern. Then you can just stick the uh, the letters in. Yeah. And it should be that because the letters they're thirteen thousandths diameter, and that's the problem is how do you how do you drill something like that? Because again, this is only three sixteenths of an inch. The, the oh. now the question I have would be: Are you capable? I hate this Windows bullshit. Okay. Uh, the, my calendar is hooked up with Hotmail, so every person in my Hotmail email, their birthdays come up on my screen every day. And, and I've got is, you know, we talked about this before. This is this is the problem. A guy did a review of the new uh, Apple uh, iWatch. Yeah. Because it was the watch was notifying every time, like it'd be like ding, 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 ding. It was like shut up. So and what if what if you uh, made a smaller letter? That you just you know put a profile underneath and just glued that to the wall. You know, like the D is not so thick that you just put uh, 
you, you laminate the two pieces together, and then it looks like it's lifted off the wall, just the paper width. And then he want, he want, I, I made these by the profile he wanted. Oh, wow. Which a, a, uh, uh, which was a, oh, where's the, uh, 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 maybe this one here. Uh, okay, look, see here? Here's a big picture. This profile was the profile he wanted. Or he sent me, but in the old days, what they did, they had like a, uh, it was like a uh, um, a heat form plastic. Yeah, yeah. Line. Yeah. Uh, and so what he wants to do is paint these yellow or gold or where they were against a black background. Well, since the height from here to here is three sixteenths an inch, it's kind of hard to do. Yeah. Now I did send him one where it was. On, in other words, the again, look, this one here. Uh, this one here is actually I colored it. This is actually one piece. The drugs and that background is all one cat uh, print. Yeah, and then I can see where it's lifted off on the bottom one. Yeah. So, yeah, this one is just the 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 separate letter. I sent them both of them so you could play with them. The problem is, how do you paint something like this? So you'd have to paint it black and then come back with like a, a almost like you're doing brick work where you'd have to uh, 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 like, br uh, you know, just touch the top of it, you know, with a color. Yeah. It's going to look like crap. So because I had them on this sprue right here and there's little bitty pins. Uh, in fact, if I open up, um, if I open up, Oh, I got it already open. Ed? No. Yes. I'm getting the, the finger. <laughs> we gotta right. go. We gotta go out soon. Uh, me and the wife and the kids. So, uh, um, maybe we should finish this off later. What's this uh, right here? This. Oh, this is uh, um. Man. I've been posting up about some uh, uh, um, O scale light globes. Yeah. Lit by LEDs. Have you seen those? Yeah, yeah. Well, this is the actual the O scale. This is the. Uh, uh, oh, that's the design for them. I didn't. I didn't notice because they weren't opaque. Well, because yeah. this is the uh, actual design. I go unhide. Oh, I got the others here. This is the. Uh, uh, there's the actual profile of it, eh? Yeah, the 3D uh, profile. And there's the um, cutaway of how they go together, you know. So, Absolutely. but uh, what I was going to show you before you run off was uh, his, uh, let's see, school house lighting fixtures. Go to Bill, 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 Bill. Oh, I would, the, the original point was, since he writes for RMC, maybe, um, maybe he will uh, uh, publish it, right? And he can say, hey, Ed Traxler did these. And I might, see this? Oh, wait a minute. See, this is the, the working drawing. See, the, um, see how I got him on, the, when I was developing the letters and the, um, yeah. The, uh, so his idea was is to cut cut away at the base of these sprues here. Yeah. And then if, and paint, and I told him, he says, well, here's the here's the pin out. Because what I did was I basically sent him, gosh darn it, I sent him uh, this piece here, like looking at that, you know, just from the backside, just to, uh, where the holes are for the pins. Yeah, that's perfect. And so, and so I said, okay, well, if he knows some guys with, I mean, they gonna cost him. He knows some people that's got a laser cutter. So all they gotta do is punch. It doesn't matter if it's curved or not because the letters were covered up, and yeah. they were near near, right? So all he gotta do is basically go fire the laser. It, it, it will it will read that PDF file. Yeah. Which some do, uh, and then he can just paint that black and just glue his letters to it. So hopefully. If it works, then he'll he'll do a little article, and maybe I'll get my name and glory 
also. Awesome. Well, it'd be, you could maybe it'd be neat with the same article yours was in. If you go like, yes, look at this. It's Ron and Bill and Ed. It sounds like a dance group. Yeah, maybe I'll have to get you in an article before he does. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thanks a lot, Ed, for coming on the show today and telling us about Helicon Focus. And, okay, uh, well, remember now that this is two modelers attempting to understand the real world. Uh, we're not photographers. We're not. Uh, we're just users. Same yeah. as you guys trying to figure this stuff out. So if we make a mistake in calling something a, a, a part of a camera, the the focal point, hey, we're not. We're just modeler guys. We're trying to we, figure this stuff out. We really don't care that much about the details. We just want to get like, photos. Like, my final string says, but between me and Ron, one of us is, is dumber than a banana. No, a stick of butter. That's how it is. <laughs> <laughs> and one of us sits in the south, so that stick of butter better be in the fridge. So, <laughs> anyway. No, stick of butter. Well, all right. I'll let you go. I guess, uh, and I'll use again. I'll use the uh, the little what they use on a modeler's life is uh, uh, good night, Dave. <laughs> no music, no funny uh, Charleston music. He's got some good music on that show, but uh, I don't think he hits my uh, my beats at all. Anyways, thanks a lot, Ed, for coming on, and I'll talk to you later. All right, have fun. Bye.